Okay, if anyone was curious, I'm kind of uh, mocking up my my own version of the NES top loader adapter board for the NES RGB kit. And also, if you can see in there, I pretty much followed what Tim was doing with the data lines and the ground planes and everything. There's a ground plane on top and bottom. And every other data line is top or bottom. And I was able to put quite a bit of ground plane in between the traces except where they go horizontal there and I had another version one of the old versions like that where I made the traces go right diagonal like that which made me have enough room to put a trace of ground plane in between them but if I put it on there it actually brought it down too far so that the board itself was actually interfering with the uh, the button section so anyway this is the new one that I've made I can slide that on there like that you can see it's fairly well centered almost perfectly centered actually plenty of room between the uh, the board and the cartridge connector still lots of room up here to wire this that was one of the things that I had problems with was this was so close to the car connector that uh, the wires that I soldered to it were had to be kind of bent under the board and routed over not going to be a problem this time and if I take the board and mock it into a top shell I don't know how, how well you're going to be able to see in there. Oops, I lost it. I don't want to solder this down just yet. I'm trying to hold, it on to, hold on to it with my fingers. With it all the way in there, there is a ton of clearance all the way around. Even if I move the power button forward, which it never gets close, it's really the... Uh, the boss on the reset button right here. That thing. That was getting away on my last design. I can put the uh, light in there a little bit better. Now, are you able to see anything in there? Doesn't really look like it, does it? There you go. A little bit better view in there. Yeah, this RGB board's kind of sitting crooked, but of course it's just because it's not soldered down and flop it around in there. But pretty, pretty easy to tell that there is more than enough space in there for it. And I can even jig a little bit and make it on the round. I have two different boards, or two different uh, boards uh, mocked up, because these are actually the header pins that I have on hand, and these are the header pins that came with the NSRGB kit, which they're just a, just a hair shorter on the standoff. I can get a close-up at it, but it's not really necessary. All you mean is just a fraction of an inch. But I wanted to mock it up with both to see if I could get away with using my headers. I don't know if you can tell, but it stands up quite a bit more. I have not actually tried this yet, so... Same deal. Plenty of room. I think one of the main concerns was... Yeah, you know what? I might actually be hitting... I might have to mock it down. At least with one solder pad here. 
just because I think I might actually be hitting that screw. Not a big deal if I am. I'll just uh, use shorter header pins. It's super hard to see in there. We also have had a top loader with a cut on the side, but I don't even, I don't think I have one that's <laughs> that far gone where I even want to do that. I want to say that it uh, actually could be hitting because I can move it around a little bit and this board will move. shouldn't be. And let me think about that. Maybe I can get a better camera angle on that. Okay, what I did was take out the throat, throat, uh, the cart throat plastic, and then I tried to set the screw to about the same height that it would have been with the plastic in, um, just by measuring it. And I'm hoping this will give us a little bit better view in there. I can already see it might be a problem. Yeah. And I could look right down in there. I'm going to change the, I'm have to pick up the camera. I believe that's in there all the way. Here you can just see it, and it is actually touching, so that's not a good thing. So, the only thing that really tells me is that I'm going to have to use shorter header pins. And that's really not a big deal. Or if I wanted to go to an extreme, I could not put a socket in place of the PPU and just solder them down directly with the taller pins. That's also an option. Um, pro uh, one of the things I've mentioned, like in the front loader, that I'm going to go ahead and solder them, solder the uh, NES RGB board, RGB board directly to the NES motherboard without sockets just because, and this is only for this reason, I have to ship these to the customer. So this board is hanging from underneath the NES motherboard. So and you bounce it around the package, I mean even if I put it in upside down I'd still say bouncing around it, it might work itself loose and I just cannot have that happen. You know, if we could have uh, Tim design these boards where these holes actually lined up to something and we could actually screw them down to standoffs that would be amazing but I personally I, I can't really figure out how that would even happen on the top loader it could happen with these two screws here and here but the board as it is now isn't wide enough to hit both of those holes and making it bigger is usually not what you want to do <laughs> with a with a circuit board and a kit. Because that just adds cost. However, it might be worth it if we could mount it down. And then we have to figure out exactly what height it would be every single time or some kind of standoff that would be adjustable somehow. I don't know how that would happen, but it'd be interesting. Anyway, there it is. There's the uh there's the oh, that's the old one. There's my new NES top loader adapter board. And it does work just fine and clears all the places it's supposed to clear good stuff